Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be VSL Season 15 Group C Final Match between Kiko and Dentarg. The first game between the two. We have Kiko starting in the upper left-hand corner as the Peach Terran, which seems like a very good color complement for Dentarg's very serious gray Protoss at the 3 o'clock location. This is going to be on Monopoly once again. And this could be a macro fest either direction. I don't know who to favor in this match. I'm going to favor Kiko just slightly. Dentarg, we've seen, is a very strong macro beast. He can't. He's one of those players who's capable of absorbing Kiko's... Where I've seen Kiko have more success with those uh, two factory aggressive styles. However, Kiko also has been shown to be more of a macro-oriented player. And I feel like if it goes... Dentarg plays a little bit because he Dentarg is one of those guys who's like, okay, I'm just gonna play the long-term macroeconomic game. I think that plays into Kiko's favor where there are opportunities to kind of jump a little bit more aggressively ahead, take a little bit more risks. And Kiko opens up those opportunities by playing ultra safe at times, you know, dropping turrets when he doesn't need to, doing doing things along those lines, playing just a little bit more conservatively. Kiko does the same thing. However, what that means is, is what this could lead to is ultra late, you know, moving more towards the mid game, late game rapidly. And when it comes to ultra late game, Dentarg, and I'm sorry, there's construction going around in the background of my house. I don't know how much it's going to pick up on the audio, but there's like drill. My door is literally getting replaced. I don't know what the figurative, I said this in chat earlier on Twitch. I'm not sure what the figurative expression of my doors being replaced is, but uh, I've got construction happening in the background. Hopefully it doesn't pick up too much on the mic. But anyway, so what that could result in is a situation where it's moving to the late game where it, it comes down to large troop movement on the ground. And that, in the previous matches we saw versus Exit, Dentarg seemed to be... He had really good macro. He had a lot of troops out there. It looks like we're seeing an SCV scout heading towards Dentarg's base. Should get there before there's a Zealot block. And it looks like Dentarg is actually skipping Zealot. But basically, as the result, I feel like in the late game, in the later stages of the game, Kiko has better co cohesive troop movement which I think is just something that happens with Terran overall, where Dentarg, I don't know that his late game troop cohesion is as strong as Kiko's, at, which could play the big factor in this match, assuming that's what we're going to see as far as late game play overall. So as far as, I almost feel like Dentarg actually probably has a bit of the stronger macro play in the early game, SCV holding on the ramp here. Zealot is going to go ahead and, I'm actually surprised this SCV's, okay, there we're seeing the movement from Kiko. I just wanted to get, Stat I guess he just wanted his butt slapped a little bit. The zealot running up and doing the double slap. He's into that, I guess. Probe getting blocked out entirely, and that is actually huge. So no information behind this. It looks like there's only a single SCV on gas, so we are, and the factory's already underway, but nothing confirmed at all for Dentarg. So he's going to be very in the dark. I think that SCV wandered up and was able to confirm that that cybernetic score was spinning. The zealot now moving forward to make sure at least three Marines or several are produced. But with this SCV blockading, this Zealot could get rejected from the ramp rather rapidly. Yeah, got to pull back. But at least confirms there's three Marines and not fewer. And now that SCV chasing it down, we do see a Dragoon wandering up to go ahead and join this. And we have, actually in the previous matches, there was a bit of an overextension. This bunker being built, but it might be a little bit too late. And some, well, I was going to say some free damage on a Marine, but because that Zealot not responding, I'm wondering how much lag was involved in this game. The Marines overstepping their bounds. One Marine taking a little bit too much damage. This is four Marines that can take... So I don't know how much that Zealot would be able to absorb damage, but four Marines does beat uh, a Dragoon, and it looks like that is going to open opportunity for this Vulture to sneak by. Dentarg not able to capitalize and get additional shots on that Vulture to open up a, a stronger defense. And this SEV, in the meantime, is still sitting pretty. It's going to be able to wander in and confirm the follow-up, which is a robotics facility. So great play from Kiko overall, getting a lot of the information. Now that probe wandering back down and blocking. We have that Nexus, the natural expansion, being built. And the Vulture is going to take the long way around just to confirm that there weren't any hidden expansions, anything along those lines. The SEV... Actually, was, was this two pile? Yeah, so it was just two pylon... Third pylon on the front in the Nexus, so he might not have confirmed that additional pylon location. The Dragoon trying to hunt down that SCV. The SCV is still alive. It's going to sacrifice its life. So it's not going to be able to confirm the follow-up on the robotics facility. The Vulture wandering in. We could hear the in the background it getting the kill on the Zealot that had returned to home base. But also confirming the natural expansions up and a Dragoon's in the way. So it's going to go ahead and back off. But Kiko in a very strong position. Now range is finished. Dragoon's starting to assault that bunker. No SCV in position as of yet. The Marine's just going to unload 
and walk into that Dragoon to push it off the front, one of them losing their lives for the effort that's going to allow that SCV to get back in position. But the command center up very, very rapidly. We do have a siege tank on its way. Siege tech. So Kiko going to play a more macro defensive. Has already got that engineering bay along the way. We have two additional gateways. So it's going to be three gate. Let's see if it's robotics facility. Or we are seeing an observatory first after the additional gateways. So now we're moving into the more macro oriented match. Supply lead. There is none. Dead even, and the worker count advantage just, I mean, it's one difference between the two. Usually in this situation, that's the situation you want to be in as Terran. You want to be in an advantageous, you want to be even with your Protoss opponent, because usually Protoss, you need to be ahead eventually. At this stage of the match, though, it's kind of ex what you would expect to see. Kind of a weird null statement, I feel like, in my commentary right there. Yeah, this is, you know, it, you get more differentiation as things move on. Three Dragoons. Covering the front so that Vulture can't peek through. We don't have the mine upgrade yet, so he's not able to plant mines with the bit of free roam that he's got. I'm wondering how much that's peeking in the background. But the Vulture already camping out at that third. Also, with that Dragoon moving down, you can see that probe trying to hide. That Vulture wants to sneak by, try to delay this third by dealing with that probe. A pylon already being dropped because cannons might be necessary to help. The cannons are very helpful at defending. We'll see if he opts for a forge or not, maybe a little bit later, but having more Dragoons, basically you need enough Dragoons to deal with the Vultures that could be flooding out, and we do see those customary turrets being planted from Kiko. Factory plopping down. I do, I don't, I'm like, hey, Kiko drops unnecessary turrets or whatever or not. I don't, I'm not, I actually need to walk that back, because I'm not sure how unnecessary it is. I need to figure out what the hotkey is to move that. Because if you're in the dark as a Terran, you don't know whether you're going up against observers or shuttles or whatever or not. And, it's, you know, it's better to produce turrets than not. But point being, sometimes Kiko's just way overly cautious in grabbing that stuff. I don't know why I'm walking back my commentary today. Just in, just in one of those moods. Already going ahead and getting that second gas up. And we see a starport being built in the corner. Plus one weapons on the way. Eggs being cleared out. The observer is going to confirm that. And it's also critically going to be able to confirm the factory count in the upper right-hand corner and get eyes otherwise. This is actually a big advantage to Dentard. He's one of those guys that knows he's smart enough he can go ahead and react to the play based on what he's seeing. We do see shuttle speed being upgraded. We already have a shuttle being produced. Robotics facility, there's the forge. Robotics facility is already here. Probably going to see a reaver and maybe some harassment to follow. I don't, I'm not sure how much purchase he's going to be able to get though because Kiko's already got the turrets on location. Might be a little bit lighter on the siege tank count because currently... Uh, not a lot of siege tanks that I've seen. Where do the siege tanks go? I know there's more than just the one. Lost track of it out, out in the field. I don't think they just wandered out and got killed while I was digressing, did I? Yeah, because there's no kill on these Dragoons. I didn't hear any explosions in the background. Anyway, Dragoons and Zealots moving forward. There they are. Lost track of them. So a decent sized attack force, mostly a defensive attack force. Dentarg wanting to interrupt a potential third base. Should a third base... Should there be a quick expansion response, there's the Photon Cannon to go ahead and seal things up a little bit more defensively. It allows, kind of opens up the Dragoons to be a little bit more aggressive on the front. Second Armory being dropped, so it suggests Kiko is going to go for more defensive macro play. Sitting on these three factories is going to go either, you know, plus one weapons. I think those Dragoons are also up there to go ahead and confirm whether there was going to be kind of a plus one movement attack or not. And Dentarg has now, I believe, confirmed that. So let's see if he even opts to go speeding up to a fourth. Right now, it's got a lot of spare minerals. One place I did see Dentark falter is the gateway count in the mid-game and also the things he could kind of deposit in the mid-game where he, he could have... He's kind of playing at half half -see half sees where he could option for a fourth base, but he also had the option to go ahead and plop down a lot of additional gateways to go ahead and match uh, counts of what's being fielded and didn't do so. So plus one weapons now online. Kiko sending out an SEV to go ahead, and it looks like he's going to slow play this, really slow play this towards the third, and this is sometimes where it plays into his Protoss opponent's hands, where he's overly conservative in grabbing the third base. We'll see if that's the case here. Vulture somehow able to sneak by in the midst of all this before the cannon's online. A Dragoon able to get some disruption, but that is a couple kills right there, and that was a spare Vulture. This Vulture is just hanging out, I guess, to go ahead and deny uh, what would be a potential fourth base. Kiko's starting to move out. Looks like he's going to attack on four factories, so he's going to be sitting on the four factories, two machine shops, has upgraded spider mines. No spider mines been laid yet. He does have a drop ship behind this. 
but the bases that I don't like dropship play on this map because it's not one of these maps where a Protoss player is going to drop a lot of pylons and where it makes it more difficult for them to kind of defend in a sealed in base. Instead, we've already seen cannons defensively. Kiko dropping some comsat, getting a look at the main and trying to see if there's already the, the tech movement. We do see the Templar archives along the way. Plus one weapons being upgraded. Speed, Zealot speed halfway. The Here's the thing for Dentarg though, is, is he needed those troops in... So this might play out for Kiko. He can go ahead and grab that third, I think, without too much trouble. Because right now, Dentarg really hasn't put his troops in position to... I guess he was maybe assuming that this would be more the target base. And as a result, Kiko is going to be able to slow play into this. But let's see how long... And this is, again, how long it's going to take Kiko. Kiko is dropping another factory, which does mean he could go for that plus one weapons, plus... Uh, or, sorry, plus two weapons, plus one armor attack in just a minute. But it could really go either way. There's the command center, it looks like, on the low ground, making it part of his blockade. So he wants to play more towards the three base max sort of thing. Vultures going ahead and mining up these locations. So this dropship feels a bit superfluous right now. So it's been built, but really hasn't done anything. Zealot's now walking up, moving towards the third. Vulture's there to greet it. They're actually all softened up. So that's three Zealots for free. More Zealots starting to march up, along with the rest of the attack force. Let's see if Kiko, yeah, has really been slow. Kiko, actually ahead in supply, though, has done a great job with his macro. Dentarg with the defensive shuttle alongside with that speed. Let's see if he wants to go ahead and get aggressive. So he's moving up to go ahead and deny and slow down this third. He's not really in position to go ahead and grab his fourth in the midst of this. Some Dragoons dying to actually do a siege tank below this. That siege tank getting a little... As I was praising Kiko's troop control earlier. Yeah, and this is the part where I feel like it could strengthen Kiko's play is, is his grabbing of the third a little bit more aggressively and a little bit more fluidly. This is this is always his very slow play here. But again, because Dentark plays a little bit more defensively, I'm not sure that he's really going to pay for it. We do see some Zealots moving down to go ahead whoops, to clear some mines. I think they might have seen the dropship as well. We'll see now. So this dropship with some siege tanks and some vultures might be able to create some disruption. Already some mining happening on the third base. Kiko's still playing very, very cautiously as far as his ability to grab. And now, so it looks like this shuttle, I guess this is a pretty good use of that shuttle, is go ahead and plop it so it's going to deny a potential fourth. So Dentarg now actually drawing everything back. The command center's lifted off. Looks like Kiko's going to wait on that turret before he goes for the true drop. And so Dentarg drawing all of his troops to the south to go ahead and make sure he establishes potentially a fourth, running into a vulture. Let's see if that's kind of early warning, but it looks like this dropship not going to key in on it. Instead, just holding the high ground, is Zealot able to go ahead and clear out that siege tank as a result? And let's see, is this dropship going to escape as well? Does not look like it. Dropship pays for its life. But honestly, that might be freeing up supply for Kiko here, because I'm not sure how much use, I'm not sure how much use that was going to get over the long term. SCV's transferring, Landing on top of their friends who look like they want to, they just want to visit their previous mineral piles one more time. A slew of siege tanks in the way. Kiko actually with a big supply lead. Plus he's got the upgrade lead. Plus two weapons. Plus one armor. Just as, uh, just, just versus plus one. And this is that stage of the game I was talking about. Where it felt like it was going to accelerate to this point of the match. And right now it looks like Kiko's macro is a little bit stronger. And he's in good position to potentially get something done. However, right here, shuttle... Moving across, looks like it wants to go for a drop in the main. Reaver landing. Landing short, though, and working on supply depots behind all of this. Let's see if Kiko has the troops to draw back to go ahead and engage this. SCV's now fleeing. Looks like the engineering bay taking some damage behind that as well. So, yeah, a couple troops summarily moving up. Some turrets have been taken out, but there's no Goliath as of yet to deal with this shuttle otherwise. Another turret being plopped down. Reaver... Plopping just to take, going down just to take some damage, it looks like. Because, yeah, you could attack these vultures, but you're not going to get a lot else out of it. The shuttle looks like, now realizing there's not much else to accomplish, going to go ahead and back out. So now the question is, is you have two sleeping giants, effectively, in Kiko and Dentarg. Looks like Dentarg's going to go ahead and grab his fourth base here. Kiko has the supply lead. He has plus two weapons, plus one armor. He's got a lot of factories behind this, three machine shops so he can pump out tanks uh, pretty rapidly so seven factories overall let's look at the production behind this we got uh what's that five gateways up there so nine gateways overall yet i do not see a, so is this the first arbiter so i don't know that there's another arbiter out in the field so i don't know that stasis is going to be there we do have double forge 
working in the background, but I don't know that there's going to be enough stasis, enough energy, anything else to deal with Kiko's army once Kiko gets moving. And Kiko looks like he's starting to set up to move. Now, is he going to go for his fourth, or is he just going to drive down towards Dentarg's natural expansion and play from there? Dentarg looking to engage. Unfortunately, as far as an engagement point, this is a pure funnel of troops. However, Kiko not quite set up. The Zealot's getting dangerously close to those siege tanks. Now, Dentarg backing up because, again, yeah, this is just... A walking... Honestly, this feels like a, enough of a trap. A death trap. You can't really come in from multiple angles. This is kind of why I was hoping there would be an Arbiter and Stasis here. So maybe Shuttle Play with some drops behind this. But there's a lot of Goliaths there as well. So now Kiko, with that supply lead, with the plus two weapons upgrade, starting to move towards Dentarg. Dentarg has already grabbed additional bases everywhere, but he hasn't plopped out to play refugee style. He has not yet plopped down additional gateways or anything along those lines where you can kind of do the run and escape style of play. Reaver plopping up, assuming that Kiko's gonna move to just play this slowly and go for the fourth base, which is possible, but Kiko's in a position where he can go ahead and push that natural expansion and get some damage done there. And also realizing, okay, if you, you're gonna expand absolutely everywhere, I'm also gonna push this where you can't defend both locations at once. Com sending the troops in retreat. That's gonna open up Kiko to go ahead and walk down. Voice cracking there for a second. Gonna He's seeing those troops moving out, so he's just going to plug the gap. And that was a... Dentarg might have just wanted to sack this. So yes, he clears this off, but at what cost? Kiko with the superior... With actually, just a 10 supply lead, but a better location. Siege tanks moving in. He's going to be able to crush these troops from both directions. And this was my concern from Dentarg yeah, at the mid-late game. Is, is at this stage, the troops kind of come in in single-file lines. And when you have more discipline of a, a troop line like this... You can see it's covering both areas, able to obliterate the Dragoons on both fronts. Dentark GGing right there. Oof. Well played by Kiko. Patient play, and I feel like a caster genius calling the level of play exactly as it was going to unfold right there. Uh, so Kiko taking game one. We'll see what happens in game two. I'm hoping Dentark adjusts play a little bit because uh, I really want to see a tight match between these guys. But good game overall. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.